Hi. So I have a trivia for you. Tell me, is this an illustration or is it a photo? To tell you the truth, it's an illustration. But first, let's have a sneak peek of what previous students and former students have done with me in the past years. This is not a photo, it's an illustration. It was created by Maria Velasquez, as you can see here. The same thing happens here. Juan Pablo Galde, Lisbeth Zúñiga. You can be capable to do something that looks so real like this by using a tool that is called Mesh Tool. Okay? These are just some examples of what you can create. Since today you're going to know how to use the tool. But before I show you how to do this, let's keep in mind what we just learned in the past video. You learned about doing blend tool. For now, you can do this by now. You have the tools to make this. Now, let me show you a simple example. This one, this is four circles. It's red to purple, purple to yellow, yellow to orange, and that's it. That's a blending tool, you see? So, how can we do this? Remember, it depends on the idea that you have. You can have this as a result. And many of the videos that you have here, for example, they are in a specific project. So don't be afraid to look for them to get the result that you are looking and seeking for. There are a lot of things uh, available in YouTube, in Battle. The secret is to type down the correct tag words, you know? Blend Tool Illustrator. Because if you only put Blend Tool, there is a um, software that is called Blend. So this is not going to work. But if you put Illustrator, the browser is going to know what to look for you, okay? Now, turning back to the mesh tool, as you can see, you can get hyper-realistic illustration like this by using Illustrator. Now, how can we do that? I'm going back to Illustrator. So, yes, this is an illustration I created in one class with my students, in face-to-face -face class, and it goes like this. The secret and success of having something good like this is how you define the layers. Now, I'm going to share with you how it was made, okay? Let me just delete this. First of all, you need to have a good reference. The photo needs to have high resolution, okay? If it's small, it's going to look pixelated and it's going to be really hard for you to get the colors and all the volume. Second of all, the size and resolution, there are different things. Size is how it's going to cover the artboard and resolution is the quality of the image. If you have the exact size and if you have high resolution, there is a good probability that you're going to have a good result. Okay? So, how I made it. I started dividing the pepper in parts. As you can see, there are a lot of layers. The more layers you have, the better result you have. Okay? It looks more real. And now, if you press Command Y, here is what you already have. I'm going to get closer. So there are some areas that I can still improve, to tell you the truth. But as an example, you know, it's, it's quite good, right? It doesn't look so bad. So I'm going to do this exercise with you so you can do the practice as well. You can uh, look for the link. I'm going to place it in the description of the video so you can have the practice too. And I'm going to get it right now. Just let me unlock it. And I'm going to start with a new document. I'm going to select Art and Illustration, okay? I'm going to select a letter. One page is okay. Vertical position because the photo is a vertical position. And instead of screen, I'm going to select Medium, Create, and I'm going to place the photo. In your case, if you download it from the link that I place it on the description, you need to go to File, Place, and then remember to press shift to keep the proportion, okay? Now, as we have seen, layers are going to be really relevant here. Please, this one that is the reference, lock it because we don't want it to be moving, you know, move like all around, around the, the document, so lock it. And then you need to start defining the areas that you're going to divide. So in my case, I used to have like eight layers. I, I don't remember if it was eight, 10, 12 layers I have right here. So here you have to define one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and so on. Now, if you don't like the reference that I'm giving to you and you want to do something different, for example, you want to do a banana 
or the grapes or maybe let's see maybe you want to do a cucumber for example you can choose whatever you want you can choose this one and so on the secret is how you're going to divide it for example in my case i will divide it here one and two I, how about if i want to do a, an apple depending on the reference that you select is how you're going to divide it for example in this case one area i will divide it in two or three three areas yes and uh, let's see what else can be grapes in this case every grape should be an individual layer okay so depending on the reference that you're using how about if you don't want to do fruits you want to do rows every petal should be one layer okay so depending on the reference that you're looking for is how complicated it's going to be let's see a perfume perfume boss let's take this one as a reference okay so the green area will be one layer this top will be another layer this area another layer another layer another layer another layer the blue area or gray another layer, a layer Ugo another layer the bottom another layer so this is how you're going to divide it okay so going back to the pepper you can do a figure by using the pen tool or you can use the ones that are available here in the toolbar you know rounded ellipse and so on it's up to you both ways are correct but it depends what works better for you it's an individual choice okay in my case i prefer to work using the rectangle so i'm going to start creating a rectangle in this area i'm going to zoom and i'm going to do it like this the color that i have it doesn't really matter it can be white it can be transparent and it can have a, a you know a line stroke or not now the secret that we are going to have here is that once you place it in the position that you want you're going to transform it how the mesh tool is this one the one that is at the side of the gradient tool and there is a video that is telling you how you can use it now I'm going to select this one and I'm going to click right in the middle now as I am not capable to see what is at the back what I'm going to do I'm going to click command right here where is the eye okay command if I have a Mac control if I have a PC and as you can see the eye is not going to have like the iris in, in the middle it's just like the contour this is going to help me to define the shape now as we have seen the direction select uh, select uh, direct selection tool is going to help me to transform so i'm going to adapt the shape of the rectangle to the size and the shape of the pepper i'm going to move the points i know that it doesn't look right now that is you know like the exact shape of the pepper but it's okay because i'm trying to adapt it to the size first now by using the handles or arms let me just close this one so i don't can, uh, make any confusion to you i'm going to create some arcs right here as you can see i'm going to select the one that is right here i'm going to change the handle right here and adapt it i'm going to adapt this one too and the secret is to select the point that you want to transform take a look how i am selecting the point the point that i want to be transforming and editing okay i'm just going to do this area as an example and a guide for you to make the um, the practice okay because later you're going to do a, an activity that is going to include this practice of the tool okay so i'm going to have it like this and and it goes like this okay so i have more or less the shape of the pepper here in case it's not perfect remember that you can still adapt the handles and then you can modify it i mean in the end um there is no just one shape of pepper you can adapt it so 
The first thing, draw a rectangle, then the mesh tool in the middle. Now, what is the second step? Using the mesh tool, I'm going to define the areas that have a light and that have shadows. For example, this area has a light, 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 and this area is darker and so on. Now, in my apologies, you know, it's, it, it gives me, I need to make it look good. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to select the mesh tool and I'm going to click in the division that is already made by the mesh tool so I can define the areas that are going to be having this area, for example, goes here. And I'm going to start creating a grid that involves the areas that have, you know, the light and that have the shadow. I'm going to select this and this, and I'm going to make this one smaller. In case you place more lines that need it, don't worry. Remember that you can edit it. How? And this is important. For example, I created this one and I don't need it any longer. Remember that when you select it with the direct selection tool right now and you select backspace, it's going to delete the ones that are vertical and the ones that are horizontal. Okay. And nothing else is going to happen. You can have another line later. I mean, it's not going to affect. I mean, if you have too many, that means that you're going to be working more, but that doesn't mean that it's not going to be uh, useful. Okay. So I'm going to create another one here, maybe here and here. If you put more than this, it's going to take you more time, but probably the quality and result is going to be more real. Okay. So as you can see, I made the grid by just clicking and considering the light and considering the shadows and everything that I have right here. Now, now is something that you need to consider the selection of the color. How are you going to use it? There are two tools that you're going to be using. Eyedrop. Remember that the eyedrop um, in Spanish will be gotero. This one is going to take the reference of the color. And the direct selection tool is going to select the specific point. So pay attention to the following trick. Okay. What I'm going to do. I'm going to select the point. I'm going to start from this area, okay? You see that I have this point selected. Now I'm going to select the, uh, the eyedrop and I'm going to click the color that is at the side of this area. You can see in the toolbar that is a darker green. Again, I want to select the second color, the second point, and this one. Now I prefer to use um, the keyboard because you know going up going down is going to take me time now the direct selection tool use a ah the eye drop use i e okay e in spanish so by selecting a and i a e l e you're going to be capable to move faster example a e a e a, E, I'm selecting the point, then I'm selecting the color. I'm selecting the point, then I'm selecting the color. I'm selecting the point, then I'm selecting the color. You can go from left to right, from the top to the bottom. It's up to you how you prefer to do it. Maybe you are going to say, I am not so sure I'm doing it good. Don't worry, you're going to do it good. So A, E, Remember that if you are too far away, get closer. And that's why you need to have a good reference for the image. So you have no trouble with your eyes, okay? A, E, A, E. Just let me con uh, finish this line or row. Now, maybe what I have done is not going to be too evident right now. Let's see what I have done. I'm going to open the layers window, okay? Remember that we all press command and then the eye, you know, the visible one. I'm going to take this one and again, I'm going to press command I and now I can see that, huh, I'm getting something. Yeah, you can see that I missed this spot. Okay, and I can see that here you have a peak. And remember that there is a transformation tool, the one that is right here, the curvature, so I can change it. So everything can be fixed. So let me show how it goes. 
hmm, it doesn't look so bad. So again, I'm going to press command and the I, and I'm going to go this area so we can have a um, more way to show it to you that it's really working, okay? So, ah, uh, E. Yes, it takes time, but I, I can assure you that at, in the end, you're going to say, woof, I'm capable to do this and more. And, ah. Uh, I just uh, decided to go to this area so you can see like the color from the top to the bottom how it goes okay how it is going to be created uh, yeah. and if you don't want to do the I and E let me show you something else Um, let me a uh, now let's see what I'm doing okay just to validate that I'm not doing it that, that wrong huh so as you can see I'm getting more color more volume so it's going to take me more time to finish it and um, I'm going to try to do the top side so you, you can have an idea of how this is going to be uh, in the end but don't worry, you're going to be capable to do. It's going to take time, but the result is going to give you so much satisfaction that it's going to worth it, okay? So, I'm going to go this line again. A and I. Oi, done. If you want to validate, remember, you can come here and click to see what's going on. And I'm going to focus in this area so you can see, for example, the management of color when you have some light. So, A. And let's see how it goes. Hmm. So it's going to take more time. Uh, maybe I'm going to um, to do, you know, um, a time lapse video <laughs> that makes it like goes faster. Or uh, if you have the patience, let me see. Uh, the video is for 18 minutes right now. Let Let's take a look to my upper. It's eight seven. Let me give me five minutes. I'm not going to record it. I'm going to show you in 8 15 everything that i have done okay i promise that i'm not going to cheat i'm going to do it just uh, to show you like in eight minutes what you're going to be capable to do okay so i'm going to pause it and then you're going to say it okay see you in a couple of minutes well i'll see i'll record it in a couple of minutes and you're going to see how it's done okay so i'm going to pause it so as i just promised i am back in eight minutes, I was capable to do this. Okay, let's see how it goes. Okay, I was capable to do this. I can see that here there are some areas that can can be improved as the, the same area. How can I improve it? And this is good. So I can select it here and then I can have the anchor point tool. Remember that you can modify it. You can add some um, handles. And in case it doesn't work with the, that tool, don't worry. Remember that you always can modify it like this. Okay. Now, remember that at the back, you're going to have another a figure as well. You can move the point. You can change the size of the handle just like this. Or in case, um, let me, if you delete it, uh, let's delete it because you say, ah, oh, I don't like it. This is going to happen. The lines that are available to this one are going to disappear. So probably you're going to lose some information that you already place here. So don't delete it. Okay. Remember that you can add points because we're talking about a path right here. Remember that you can move these ones too. 
okay? And in case you don't like it, instead of pressing delete, remember that you have the delete anchor point as well. Okay, let me click it, if it's the delete anchor point, let me see where I'm deleting it because I can see, I'm not so sure if I'm doing it in exactly in the same spot. There it is, okay? So you can add, you can delete, and you can adapt. And then there's no peak at all. Well, it looks like a bump, but you, you get the idea, okay? So the hyper-realistic look is capable, but it's going to take a lot of time. So the secret is to select a reference that is not going to be too complicated, okay? And in case you make a mistake like this, it was made on in purpose, okay? For example, this one is darker. Um, if you want to change the color, you can trust yourself too. I mean, instead of having this green, I'm going to select this darker green. Okay, let me see this one. And I'm going to select um, in this one, okay? And instead of having this one, um, the one that is on the top right here, I'm going to have a lighter green, maybe this one. And the other one that is affecting it is this one probably, and I'm going to select it. Remember that whatever you click is going to tell you in the toolbar the color that you are selecting. I'm going to select a lighter one, and I'm going to select this one. And now the darker spot is not any longer there. So depending on the reference of the image, how you're going to do it. And yes, it takes a lot of time, but you're capable to do it. Now, let me move this one so we can see the reference. It looks smooth, it doesn't look pixelated. There are some areas that could be improved like this and this, but of course, well, it seems that is, this area is white. So it's going to take time, but the secret is how you manage to select the reference that you are going to work with. Now, remember that the mesh tool, I'm going to include um, a new page. I, I wanted to do, you know, like the fast forwarding uh, my illustration, but it's going to take time and I want to upload all the videos so you're capable to start the class to understand it better, okay? So um, remember that the mesh tool works with figures like the rectangle that I just started, but it works with organic figures like this. And uh, let me see where is the starting point. And uh, here is the starting point. Now, depending where you click, some curves like this are going to be developed. Now, remember that if this happened, you don't have to panic. You can still edit them, you know, like this. And in case it doesn't work for you, like this curve that is right here, you can select that specific point and click it here. In case you're not capable to delete this because I'm not selecting the point or it's not permitted and point of a path. In case you're not capable to delete it, if you press delete, this curve is going to disappear, but at the same time, you're not going to be capable to apply. So you have again, to press the mesh, mesh tool in this area and this area. Why this is going to affect us? You can see that this is coming to this area, to this other area, and it has a curve. So when I apply color, let's see. So you can see how it's going to, to be created. That's why I, I prefer to do it by, um, I prefer to do it by a rectangle. So let me show you what's going to happen. I'm going to select the color here the color here and here Oy. and here the colors are going to be considering from the outside then they're not going to have that specific uh, volume that you're looking for I'm going to have yellow here and yellow I don't know if you can see that the curve is not going to be that means that yes you can draw it with a um, pen tool but sometimes these curves are going to affect your design and the volume that you're going to create. And as you can see, you're not capable to erase it. In the past, you were capable to. That's why I was so sure when I was showing it to you. But it seems that in the new version, you can't. So that's good for me to know as well. So you can edit it, of course. You can move it. But if you move it, this is going to happen too. Okay? You're affecting how the, um, the volume is generated. So as a suggestion, it has worked for me really good in the past. Try to do this. And again, if you want inspiration, consider the fact that all of them, the ones that are here, were created by students just like you. And the secret of their success is that they selected something that they were capable to do. And it's not only one tool. For example, 
there's a combination of gradient, a combination of blend, a combination of mesh. Okay, you can have it right here. So, um, if you have any question, ask me. If you want to do a specific thing, don't be afraid about using YouTube. Type down YouTube and then, I don't know, mesh tool and um, moto, motorcycle, okay? You're going to see a lot of examples and they're made in six minutes, eight minutes and so on. So don't be afraid, everything is on the web, but the secret is what do you select as a reference? Now, web pages that I recommend, pixels. Here you can download high resolution photos, okay? Pexels.com, the other one on Splash, okay? And of course, Freepik. Okay, so these three web pages they have uh, for free and high resolution photos. Avoid going to Google and type down here what you're looking because um, it's going to be hard. Let me show you an example. Uh, maybe you want to do some, um, I don't know, a glass of water. If you want to use a glass of water as a reference, be aware that some of the images that are available here on the web, they're going to send you to a specific uh, web page. In my case, remember that I am in Germany, so it's going to tell me uh, to send me to a specific area. Now, if I'm looking for a photo like this one, this one is from iStock. That means that you have to pay for it. Another important thing right at the bottom is going to tell you the size that you have. Usually these photos are in 72 dots per inch. That means low resolution. So. If you want to use them, it's okay to have a low resolution, but you need a higher size. A higher size, how can you get them? On Google, uh, you can go where it says Tools, and then select uh, Tamaño, and then click where it says uh, Big. Uh, grandes. <laughs> now, how do I know if it has a good size? Is This one is 1,200 pixels, okay? My suggestion would be to use more than 200 and 500, uh, 2,500, okay? Like for example, this one is good, this one works. This one doesn't work, even though for Google is big, for your use and for your main goal to practice and do the exercise, it's not going to be useful. So remember, I already give you these three web pages and they're going to be really nice. I, I can assure you they're going to work. So for this assignment, be patient, but you're going to capable, be capable to do a really great job. So any questions for that, let me know. Take care.